All right, so um, I'm not going to talk too much as an intro, um, but there's some information here that I've laid out. What I do want to direct your attention to is my device that you can see here, and I'm using Adobe Capture CC. And Capture CC allows you to capture um, a large assortment of different things through uh, either Android or iOS. And the app is pretty much the same right now, depending upon whichever one you're, you're using. So we have things like shapes and patterns, colors, brushes, and looks. Now, inside of Animate CC, there's a couple of these that come across really well. One of those is brushes. So you're able to actually take a photograph of something and turn it into a brush and then use it within Animate. Colors, of course, comes across pretty well. And for instance, uh, this middle one here that has a lot of red tones, um, I can go in there and look at some information about it and also see the image that I actually sampled it from. So you can see I sampled it from a rose. And actually, if I go into shapes, there's this rose right here. And that's the exact same rose. And you can see the uh, image that I sampled that from as well. And then I've got some little toys here from my daughters. But what I want to do is actually bring some of this stuff into Animate CC. So let's move my phone off of there. And I'm going to create a new document. So File, New. And I'll just create an ActionScript 3.0 document, leaving all the settings as they are, and hit OK. So once that's created, I can actually open up right here my CC libraries. And here's that same ACP Live library that I generated from Adobe Capture CC. You can see all my different assets here. And notice I can use any of these color themes that I've chosen, any of these brushes, any of these graphics, but something like patterns, I actually can't use because there is nothing really to use that with inside of uh, inside of Animate. It's an incompatible format, so I can just close that out to focus on the pieces that I, I can use. And the one I want to use is this rose shape, first of all. So I'm going to pull that into Animate, and it's going to ask me what I want to do with it. You can see it's actually an SVG that gets generated by Capture CC. And what we'll do is just import all paths into the same layer and frame in this case. And OK. Oops, you know what? There's something I did wrong. You can see it's like way big here. I actually wanted to resize my stage when I did that, which is an option in there. So let's back out of there, pull it back in. And oh, it didn't ask me. That's strange. Well, that's okay. It's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do now is actually go in and adjust the size of my stage so it's a little bigger. So in this case, I want it to be like 500 by 600 maybe. And with that done, I can select everything on the stage, fit everything in my window, and use something like the transform tool to Kind of pull that down to an acceptable level here. So perhaps something like that. Now notice when I bring this in and I'm actually working with this object that it's got a lot of different points here. If we go into like 800% and just move along, we can see there's all sorts of little little vector points here that I can manipulate. However, you might not want that many. You can see it's it could lag a little bit with all of these points. And there is a choice you can make inside of Capture CC that allows you to optimize. But one of the nice things about bringing it into Animate is you're able to optimize from here as well. So to do that, I need to select my shapes and then choose Modify, and let's go to Shape. And I can do things like Smooth, Advanced Smooth, and Optimize. So going into Optimize, you can see the strength here is at zero. I can pull that up to like 58%. And you can see it smooths it out pretty nicely for me. 88% even more. 
I'm going to just pull it to like 72 because I do like some of the jagginess that it brings to it. And once we hit OK, it lets you know the massive reduction that it's done here, a 37% reduction in the amount of curves. And I still have this nice uh, shape here that I can use. So with that shape created, I'm going to choose my lasso tool. And I'm going to isolate some of these pieces. So here's the actual head of the rows. And opening up my CC Libraries panel once again, I can actually go ahead and apply any of these colors that I sampled from the rose itself back onto the rose shape. With that done, I'm going to isolate this piece into a movie clip symbol. So I'll choose Modify, Convert to Symbol. And I'll just call that Head. It'll be a movie clip, and I'll hit OK. So this is now its own isolated object. And I can do the same thing to some of these other pieces here, even just moving that one away, because I don't really need it right now. And I'm just freehanding this with my uh, tablet here. And I may actually have to go through and just isolate some of these a little bit better so that they're not touching. So to do that, I can go into my eraser tool and just kind of take some pieces off here. There we go. And it's not cooperating with me, but that's okay because what we can do in the interest of time is just go out to 100% and I'm gonna turn this green. So I'll go back into my CC library and choose the green color that I sampled from the rose as well. And note that if you hold down shift inside of animate, you can choose other pieces and other colors. So perhaps go in here and choose that green color there and maybe even change that a little bit. So if I want to make it a little darker, not quite black, there we go. And then I can, of course, select all of these and again, create a symbol. So I'll just call this stem and hit OK. So with that done, let's go ahead and fit in window, which is going to fit everything together. And I'll move that rose back over the head where it belongs. And let's actually go ahead and select everything with a controller command A. And then we can go ahead and distribute both of these objects to layers. So I now have a number of different layers here. And if you want to see kind of what's in each one, obviously we have our stem and our head right here, but we've got some extra little pieces that are kind of toss away. So I can just actually remove that and it doesn't really impact the rows whatsoever. One thing I want to do is actually change the background color of this object. So the stage color here, I can go ahead and choose something like this red color and go ahead and just pull that down so it's nice and dark. And that's pretty good. I kind of like the effect that Capture CC provides when it's actually a bit rough like this. Um, so that's actually the, the look that I'm going for there. All right, so now that I have that created, I can pull this additional layer down and I can make this my, my background layer because one thing I want to do is actually use some of the brushes that I created to sort of, uh, you know, break this, give a little texture to the background. So I'm going to go up to actually 50% here and choose my paintbrush tool. I'm going to turn object drawing mode on and I'll draw as a fill and then go ahead and choose my color. So the color, of course, is going to come from my CC library. And I'll choose this color right here. It's really kind of dark. Dark bit. And I don't know why that's not quite coming, but I'll just sample it from there. And we can move along. So I'll bring my stroke up a bit. And one thing I definitely want to do is apply a specific brush style from Capture CC in my CC library. So 
This is actually generated from the stem of the flower. So I'm gonna use that. Just double click and it'll apply to my style window here. And then you can just kind of brush against it like that. And if I wanted to, I could even select this and do additional things like pull down the alpha transparency uh, just to make it blend in a little better or whatnot. You really are in control of a lot of the different things that you'd be doing with these because they're just, they're just vectors, right? So let's go back and fit in window. So notice here that what we have is our nice background. We've got this thing here, but it spills over. Um, if you find that distracting, you can always clip the content outside of the stage. And then you've got sort of that nice uh, color there. And of course, something you could always do is animate this. Um, I am running a bit low on time, so I'm not sure if I can animate it a lot. But I'll go out to uh, frame 20 here and choose to insert into my timeline some extra frames. And what I'll also do is apply a keyframe, or a motion tween rather, to these frames here, because that's going to allow me to actually animate this thing. That's where I want it to end up. And what I'm gonna do is just shift this down with my arrow keys here, use my transform tool to just shift them like that. And you can see this motion path here. I'm gonna actually go ahead and make some adjustments to this so it's a bit smoother. And obviously I need to straighten things up on that last frame. Oops. And there we go. There's just a little bit of animation. Of course, if I had time, I could apply any sorts of eases and, and things like that to it, but that will do exactly what we want. So now if I wanted to test it, I can always do a control or command enter and see that animation occur. Uh, I could additionally publish this and it'll publish it as a Swift right now, but you could also go ahead and publish as different image formats including an animated GIF. So if I wanted to actually animate this as a GIF, and excuse me, but this window is huge. Let's disable transparency here. And you can see that we could publish this as an animated GIF, and it's a little big right now too. So I can change the width and height. If you're used to uh, doing stuff like this in Photoshop, this export image dialog should look very, very familiar. But anyway, that'll export a GIF for you. And if you want to change this to other formats, maybe you want to change it to a video, you can export this as a video. And as you saw Sandy show inside of Adobe Media Encoder, you could choose the specific types of video what you want to convert this to. And lastly, you can, of course, convert to other document formats from commands. So I could convert this to HTML5 Canvas if I wanted to, to WebGL, and both of those would run in the native browser without any sort of need for Flash Player or anything like that. So it's a native format that can be exported from Animate. And that's what I've got. So thank you.